Hello, saints, and welcome back to Wakefulness Theology. My name is Messenger Paula, and I am here with part two of the secret timeline hidden in Numbers 13, verses 25 through 33. So using the letter lines, um, I am demonstrating how you can get deeper understanding with anything using the letter lines, understanding God's holy name, which is pi, okay? And, and the letter lines being this formula um, that, that God has given me. So a lot of you are, you might be new to this, you might not have any idea of what I'm talking about. Some of you have been following me since the beginning and you might be tired of the explanation. It's a mixed bag of people. But uh, just to be qu uh, clear, if you want more information, you can um, click this uh, playlist, which is explaining what is wakefulness theology. And as well, you could see this video that I've recently done about an, a brother who I don't know who dreamed of me. I know it was of me. <laughs> you know, when someone's talking about you, you know that that dream was about me. And it was uh, a way of confirming um, that what I'm saying is true. This is a spiritual language. This is the Father's language that he is allowing us to be able to decipher in the last days to give us clarity, to give us strength so that we won't be deceived. Um, and this actually has nothing to do with religion or religiousness, religiousness, and the Father did tell me to, um, to kind of steer clear of that because this is to bring people into a relationship with the, the Father who at the moment are not uh, believers. Right. This is a, this is a sort of proof. This is a more tangibility of of higher things um, that he is allowing us to have right now. So um, this using the Bible is only for one for the religious people, you know. But two, I think this is my understanding of why uh, Yeshua has given me Numbers thirteen. I think also it's just a way of giving context, a general context, because when I'm doing my news stream, I know my life. And so it makes sense to me. So I know what each line is representing each year. I understand what that's talking about, but <clears throat> we are many people. I don't know how many people will watch this video. And so you guys don't know my life. So if I show you a letter line of my life, it would mean nothing to you. But this way, you, um, using the Bible as context, you can see how it would work for you in your life. So this video, what I'm doing is nothing more than that. I'm giving context for each number line to give you an idea of how to use it, if that makes sense. In the next video, what I'm going to do is um, use my new stream year by year and, and show you how it proves that in, in this verse, Numbers 13, there is a timeline and this is representing what will happen to us as the body of Christ in those years. I'm going to point out the things to you and leave it up to you to do deeper work and understanding on your own, to take it to God, to pray for yourself and to, and to find out your own answers. This is the only way you're going to believe. I can't give you belief. I can't give you understanding. I can't actually, I can't give you anything. It's you and your relationship with God. Um, and if this is helpful for you, God bless you. I'm very happy. So let's start exploring Canaan. This is Numbers 13. Um, and so I just wanted to do a quick overview of the whole uh, mm, chapter 13 um, because it's very important. I told you that my job 
is uh, what we see in Numbers 1-2, which is to um, decode or to calculate the numbers of the tribe of Israel, pretty much, and put them uh, according to their tribes. So right here, um, at the beginning, they're talking about how uh, there was a representative from each tribe of Israel and their names. Okay, so this is highly, highly significant. I'm sure there's all kinds of codes to be broken in there. It would just take li lifetime after lifetime after lifetime to do it unless I have a computer program. I don't for the moment. If anyone can help me do that, please contact me. Um, but the point being that later in the other verses when they're talking about... Um, the spies that we talked about in the last video, these are the spies they're talking about, the representatives of, of each tribe, which in our day that I said in the last video represents um, spiritual Israel, the, the leaders, uh, the end time ministers that are to go out and help with the harvest, okay? So I also wanted to point out <clears throat> that it's... Um, into the hill country. So it's a hilly country. I wanted to point that out. Um, of course, you're going to pause this and read it for yourself. Okay, so uh, in this verse, we are looking for deeper meanings of things, right? Using the letter lines. I just want to point out that it was the season for the first ripe. We are the first uh, ripe grapes. That's That represents us, and this is the season for that. So that's represented right here. So when they reached the valley of Eskol, they cut off uh, a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. So here we were talking about the land was a um, happy land. This place was called the valley of Eskol because of the cluster of grapes that Israelites cut off there. So at the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is the fruit. But the people who live, live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. Amalekites live in the Gev, and the Hedatites, Jubazites, and Jebusites and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we certainly, for we can certainly do it. But the men had gone up with him. The men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we. And they spoke spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. And all the people we saw there are of great size. Uh, we saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Okay, so let's just keep a general idea of the story and read these letter lines. And in the last video, I showed you how to, um, how I came up with the Roger word. So you have Roger here, insensibility, pain, vision, defective vision. Um, here we have optical instruments, blindness, visibility, invisibility and appearance as I showed you in the last video and I explained to you how I came up with the definitions and I also explained to you that this situation is a living situation so uh, the definitions can improve as God teaches me um, my understanding can get uh, more clearer um, and more precise and uh, any error that might be in there um, will in time be clarified so what I have for the moment I have literally copied and pasted inside um, the, my interpretation of the line. So you'll see that as we go along. Um, after I've already explained how to do a letter line, so we have the Greek and the Hebrew definitions here. Um, we have the Roger uh, calculation of this word here, and again the Roger here, and again the Hebrew and Greek here. And, that, and pretty much that's it. I just copy and paste, put it together, 
and um, and it reads. It reads like a sentence, and it makes sense in context because this this number twenty five twenty six. Sorry, God told me to say the letter twenty five twenty six twenty seven etc. Um, it can be applied to you. It can be applied to me. It could be applied to a Bible story. This is just to give you an idea of how the letter lines uh, agree and give deeper understanding. So, letter line 25. Uh, you love and feel a love for a place. You find relief because now God has given you an explanation. As a disciple of Yeshua, you exchange your services or reciprocate good deeds in a situation that could destroy and bring about death. Uh, philosophers speculate about the situation, but they are missing the truth. So this is exactly what's going on in the Bible story. You have uh, the love and feel a love for the place. We're talking about the land. You know, they, they want to go into the land of milk and honey. Um, exactly. And when you have it right here, it's talking about a hilly place, like I pointed out earlier. A place in Palestine. So I'm not saying this is the literal place, but when they're talking about a love for the land, yes, they're talking about the milk and honey, right? The land of milk and honey. Um, you find relief because now God has given you an explanation. So... The spies, as I said before, were are representing us today, the, the real, true, uh, spiritual uh, Israel, the end-time uh, um, ministers, um, and you find relief because now has, God has given you an explanation. So the spies, they went out into the land, and they saw the land, and they came back, and they explained to Moses, literally. So the going out into the land, because this is 2025, this is the work that we're doing now. This is 2017. So the work that we're doing from 2014, which I was talking about in the last timeline, which was John 21, I believe, the Feed the Sheep uh, timeline. It says in that timeline that we uh, have actually started in 2014. We've been called and now we're, we're doing the work that we're supposed to do. We're doing our duty right now. This is going to go up until 2025, um, and by 2025, we will have done the writing we were supposed to do, the, the discovering, the searching, the figuring out, the finding, the understanding. All of that will have been done in 2025, and we will be able to give a report back to um, the church or the, the people, right? And so that is is the explanation they're talking about the work that we will have done by that point as as in the story right they went out and spied the land and came back and gave an explanation um, as a disciple of Yeshua you are exchanging your services or representing uh, reciprocating good deeds in a situation that could destroy and bring about death that's exactly what happened in the Bible story they went out but it's a very dangerous situation because it turns out the land is full of giants right and so they come back and they say um, they do the report, but it was a dangerous mission. Um, and the, the following s decisions that have to be made on what they brought back. So they brought back this story, this explanation, and now decisions have to be made. And depending on what decisions are made, it could lead to, to death. You know, it's a, it's a life or death situation. So philosophers speculate about the situation, but they are missing the truth. And that's very clear because in the story you have Caleb and you have uh, who I believe is representing the remnant, the very small, I don't know the name, but it's representing those of us who are true and will stay true and faithful uh, to the word and, and to um, Yeshua HaMashiach. And then you have probably the majority of people who won't, more like the great falling away. So the philosophers speculate about the situation, but they are missing the truth that obviously is talking about the brothers because you have Caleb and then you have the other spies that went out with him. So he is the only one that said to take over the land, which is in agreement with uh, what God wanted. And then the other one said, no, we can't. And so they would be the ones who were missing the truth. Okay, so here, 2026, you are full of good will, love, and benevolence because our Father in heaven is your joy, but there is judgment from above that has judged, and knowing that one will 
not be saved except for that they believe in the Master Yeshua's cross. You have been chosen by God to receive knowledge of his secret hidden information. You are displeased with what you have discovered, but the Father has gathered you for his purpose. Others are being blessed through the faith of the secret information revealed by Jesus given to the ministers of the saints to reveal. Okay, so this is Numbers 13, 26. It's it is giving more information about Numbers 13, 26, and this will is a commentary as well about uh, 2026, as we will see when I do my new stream in the next video. Um, so let's see how, how does it um, give us more understanding about the Bible story. So you are full of goodwill, love, and benevolence because your father is your joy. So here we talked about joy. Um, it's represented in the story with the, uh, the grapes that they brought back and how um, those grapes are representing the relationship between Jesus and the church. Because I said in the other video, in the John timeline, we were saying that in 2025, the church will be pure. The church will be um, as Jesus wants us to be, right? And in this story, you can see that the grapes, they take two men to carry it and they're carrying it on wood. The wood is representing Jesus's cross. The grapes is representing the promise, Jesus, okay? And, and us becoming one with him, getting going, being ready, prepared to go into that land of milk and honey. This is joy, okay? That fruit is joy and goodwill. It's the promise of the Father having been found and in our hands, right? Um, so yes, he is our joy. Uh, but there is judgment from above that has judged and knowing that one will not be saved except for that they believe in the master's cross. So right here, judgment, judgment has more meanings than just like a judge saying you're guilty or you're not guilty. Judgment also can mean um, being able to decide and judge for yourself what to do or what not to do. So we're talking about um, perception, we're talking about um, choice, options, uh, judging. Um, so in this situation, what I'm understanding, the deeper meaning is that it's talking about the argument between Caleb and the brothers because the judgment, the, the um, decision was we were to go into the land, right? But knowing that if we go into the land, that it's going to be death, you, we, they will die. Well, that's what they thought. They were afraid of that. They would die because the, the giants were there, except um, Caleb was saying, yes, we would die, except that we believe in um, the Father. The Father is on our side and he will make us strong enough to be able to do that. So this right here uh, sounds like that, that battle that's going on between Caleb and the brothers. Um, yes, going into that land but knowing the only way you will be able to take that land over is through the grace of, of God, right? And that's what this is talking about. And that's what the story is talking about. In my opinion, like I said, it's living and it's developing. So you probably will see even more things than what I'm explaining right now. This is a living situation. And when you apply it to your life or some other situation, it's going to bring insight as well. Um, you have been chosen by God to receive knowledge of his secret hidden information. So that's very easy. They were spies and we talked about uh, the spies and what it represents. So they went out in the land and they brought back this information. Boom. It's the same that's going to happen in our personal lives. Um, this right here that we're talking about is hidden secret information. Is it not? Right. Um, you are displeased with what you have discovered, but the father has gathered you for his purpose. So they went out, they spied the land, they brought back the information to the church, and guess what? There's giants in the lands, so they are displeased. It's not good news, right? It's good news and bad news because you have the milk and honey, you have the promise, but you will surely die if you do not have, um, if you do not believe in, in the Father, right? Yeshua's holy cross. So it's exactly saying that same thing. You are displeased. The Father has gathered you for his purpose. Yes, we just talked about uh, the names and the 
uh, the each man or each person representing the each tribe. Um, and others are blessed through their faith of the secret information revealed by Jesus given to the ministers to real, uh, ministers of the saints to reveal. And that's exactly what's happening in the story. Um, they went out, they spied land, they got the information, and we know that they were blessed because they bring back the grapes, which is uh, symbolizing Jesus, right? So we know that they were blessed with this information, and they came back and told the congregation. They told back and told, came back and told uh, Moses and, and the, the, the rest of the tribes to reveal this information. There you go. And uh, what I'm saying is that in the bigger sense, this represents us and our ministries that are developing and that will be uh, figured out. And at this time, 2026, we are sharing that information with people, but there's good news and there's bad news, right? And we will have to make a choice at that time. Every individual person will have to make a choice at that time, how we're going to go about this information that has been brought forth. So a numbers 13, 27 and 20, 27, you are beloved by the father. Uh, you are an Israelite with perception and vision. This means you are eager for the word. The first aspect of the word truth from the father's mouth is faith. The second is love. And the third is works. And from this and from these comes life come. You find the father and his kingdom. You have conceived again in the world to search for the father. You have been conceived again in the world to search for the Father. You bring forth an unyielding negative situation or uncertainty in your life that is temporary. You are directly confronting obstacles, unfamiliar situations, or unwanted changes that are necessary in the interim or as part of the flow of life. Though there may be temporary fighting, the merciful Father is innumerable in his qualities and his names. So um, you are beloved by the Father. That's very obvious. Again, we have uh, the promise, the, the land of milk and honey, uh, you are an Israelite with perception and vision. Um, this means you are eager for the word and all of this part right here. I just want you to understand that honey represents the word of God. Okay. Um, as we see here. So this hunger for the land uh, of the promise, the fruit, the land of milk and honey is representing us today in the end days being hungry for his word being hungry for the truth and the promise of his return okay so do you see how the two stories symbolically they're they're saying the same thing and what they're saying symbolically is written right here we are loved by the father we are israelites we have perception and vision um meaning we're able to see the the land and to see the the understand the message that has been told to us and the the judgment of what we're supposed to be doing right we can see um and and we can see because we're eager for the word which is the promise which is the land of milk and honey and in our days it's the return of Jesus and and um his promise and his word which is faith, love, and works, and is life, eternal life. Boom. Drop the microphone. Walk away. Um, so you find the kingdom, you know, the Father and his kingdom, and so it's the same. As I said, in 2025, we're finishing our work. We're telling others. and It, it seems to me, because I, um, in the, at just right here in the story is when um, they're saying that the land is full of giants and then Caleb says yes but we can come and take it over it seems to me it's the part of saying that we are we have been brought here our duty is to go and search for the father so it means to go out into the land and go back into the land right that's what i would understand but it, it matches with the story again you guys you're the work i'm doing right now is the same work you you're capable of doing so We'll see. I mean, that's what I take that as. You bring forth an unyielding negative situation. And so this whole part right here is talking about the um, Nephilim, talking about the giants in the land, the cannibals, cannibalism, um, and, you know, the, the temporary fighting that might have to go on between us, the chosen um, children of, of the Most High Father, and the, the evil ones but god is great he's he's all he's everything he's all powerful amen 2028 
So this is representing 13, 28, and uh, 20, 28 for us in the larger sense. The Father has given you knowledge of those in some form of slavery or unfree to go where they will. You want to bring life to those people by invoking the Father, praying frequently and receiving his generosity because humanity is drunk, not thirsty, blind in their hearts and not seeing. Our Father without limitation, which is incomprehensible and unknowable, gives you power, protection and strength to be unchangeable in your internal being. Uh, you are you are what you are so this one uh, again it it is telling the same story when they're talking about the slavery and the unfree people they're talking about in the story in those cities the cities are walled right if you go back and read the story you'll see that the cities are walled and it's not only the Nephilim in there there's not only the children of Anak uh, the Giants there are just people humans in there as well and they are being eaten that hence we go back to the cannibalism warning that Jesus gave me in my dream these people are in walled cities with giants and they are being eaten Okay, so these are slaves. And when we look here at this line 28, Hagar, the concubine of Abraham, it's talking about Hagar was um, the slave woman who had children with Abraham before, I believe her name is Sarah, was able to have um, her uh, child, which, and her child is representing the, the promise, and then Hagar uh, is, you know, a slave. So that's what this is representing, slavery. So they're unfree to go where they will. And I think it's funny because, you know, uh, we're talking about building a wall around America. And, you know, it's on one way you're keeping people out of America. But at the same time, you're walling people and keeping them in as well. It's doing two functions, right? A wall doesn't just one work one way. It keeps people from um, coming in, but it also keeps people from going out. And... Uh, <laughs> I thought it was funny when I was reading the verse, it was a different version of this one. So right here in the King James Version, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And I was laughing because I thought about the wall with Donald Trump and then I thought, well, make America great again because it, it says very great. Uh, I don't know if that's funny or spooky uh, or if I'm just making that up, but that's what came to my mind. So there you go. Ooh. So here um, we talked about the slavery. So we're talking about the people. We're talking about the multitudes of people because our job as end time ministers is to go out into the fields and help with the harvest. Right. Um, and we know the wheats and the tares and we know everybody's all mixed up. So our job is to go in there and um, help to free these people. We want to bring life to those people. And we we are going, and this is 2028, we need to pray frequently and we need to um, receive his generosity because the the people are drunk and not, thir not thirsty and blind in their hearts and not seeing. How much clearer does it have to be? Um, our Father without limitation, which is incomprehensible and un un unknowable, gives you power, protection, and strength to be unchangeable. You are what you are, so you are a child of God, and there ain't nothing that's going to change that in 2028, not even the threat of death, okay? We're in it to win it. We're very clear, and we're out in the fields, and we're trying to help with the harvest, and God has given us all the power, the strength, and everything we need to be successful in that task, and that is what is represented in the Bible verse, and that is um, just to give you context for this letter line. OK. Um, and in this Bible verse, as I said, they're talking about the people who are walled in there and uh, the the children of uh, 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 Anak. I forget how they're called now. Anak. Yes. Um, how they're blind in their hearts and um, how Caleb was saying we can go up there and take over the land. And so this right here saying you can go up and you can do it because God will give us protection and strength and there's nothing that's going to change us. We are we are sticking to our stunt guns. Let's get this done, right? That, that That's what it is. Perseverance, savoriness, savoriness, salt, 
if salt loses its flavor, you know, it's no good anymore. So I mean, it's, in every way, it's just confirmation. Each letter line, we're using the context of numbers 13 um, to, because it's a story that all of us can understand. And we're showing how the letter lines are capable of giving deeper information and deeper understanding to any, any, any situation that has that letter. Okay? If that makes sense. Okay, so God, your Father in heaven, compels you into public service. You have perception, you know yourself, and see others who are who are the seed of the promise of Jesus and harvesting them in order to be filled with the kingdom to be filled with the kingdom redemption release from captivity to obtain freedom you are as Jesus you forego temporary needs for longer term goals fasting and withholding from the carnal material world makes you better stronger person than you were before in correlation to the church experiencing self renewal and self cleansing so this is 29 These lines right here are really uh, spooky. They're really spooky because it's the same numbers as the World Trade Center situation. The woman was 29, the twin who died, and we talked about that in another video. And here, um, as well, I forget why we had 30 in the, it must have been like the time was 5.30 or something like that. So um, we have the two numbers back to back that are also represented in, in the Oculus World Trade Center. Um, here we're talking about numbers 13, 29, um, also having a commentary on 29, 29 for the body of Christ and um, here numbers 13, 30 as well for 2030. Uh, how does it relate to the story? Here I put public service because here it says public service, but without context, I didn't know exactly what it meant. I wrote it with the World Trade Center Oculus sacrifice situation. But here um, it says compelled to go. And in the story, that's exactly, exactly what it's saying. It's saying um, Caleb right here. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up. Let us go up at once, right? Um, so this is what it's talking about. It compels you to go up. So I don't know, it could be, and then you have all the different things. It could be service, it could be an errand, it could be a courier, it could be into the land of the promised land we have to go up. You have perception, you know yourself, and see others who are the seed of the promise of Jesus and harvesting them in order to be filled with the kingdom and redemption and to go from captivity to obtain freedom. That's exactly what I just said. Um, in the last line, it's talking about those people who are walled, who are in a slave situation and they're unfree. Here in uh, 2029, we're compelled to go out among them and minister as end time ministers of the last days, right? Um, and we are clean. The church, we, we finally get it together. We're finally ready um, to, to meet uh, Yeshua HaMashiach when he comes back and we're doing the work we're supposed to be doing. Um, there you go. And um, to give you more um, kind of proof that this is what the Bible verse is talking about as well, let's look at the meaning of the name Caleb. Right here, you can see these qualities are exactly um, what the church, what um, the body of Christ will be at that time. Caleb, in the meaning of his name. Okay, so here at 30, as a vessel of God, you worship the Father of the all with your life. People are being led astray with deceptions. The word leaves, the word is truth from the Father's mouth. Faith, love, and works leading to life. But you are recognizing the Father who created you, and his power is not foreign to you by hindering, beating back, and checking Jezebel. It isn't time for the great angels on high clouds to come to bring people the saints to where the spirit of life dwells yet. So this is very funny because for a long time I was thinking maybe the, the rapture was in 2030, but apparently I'm wrong because it says right here, it is not time for that to happen yet, right? Um, how does this relate to the Bible story? 
Um, it's very, very obvious. People are being led astray with the deception. That this is exactly the part where uh, about the part where the brothers after uh, after this this time is when the brothers are saying that we can't uh, go to the land because they're stronger than us. So um, that's where being led astray and the deception starts to come in. And I don't know, not some people not being obedient to the word of God, right? And again, the word of God is truth from the Father's mouth, faith, love, works, and etc. Right here, we're talking about beating back and checking Jezebel. So also, it's the fight, I think, in the story. It represents the fight between Caleb and, and the brothers, right? Um, but this isn't the time to go up to the promised land yet. And actually, when you read the story, it you'll see that they don't actually... They, that later uh, they're punished because they were not faithful. Um, they were not obedient to God's word. So they did not go up um, to take over the land. And so they had to go around the wilderness for, I don't know, uh, another 40 years. So here, um, it, it doesn't happen until the next um, chapter uh, 23. So what is it? 14, 23. Surely they shall not see the land which I swore uh, unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. Now Caleb um, means dog, but backwards we know that means God, as I showed you before. Because he had another spirit with him and hath followed me fully, him I will bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. So we're talking about that small fraction of people who uh, stay faithful to God are the ones who will be able to go into the kingdom. But it doesn't happen in, in this timeline, in this story. It doesn't happen at that time. It happens here um, much later. Tomorrow I'll turn to you... Uh, yeah, and and your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years. So what I'm saying is that here in 2030, it doesn't happen yet because the people who were unfaithful to the word of God, um, sorry, disobedient to God, um, have to go around again for another amount of time that equals the amount of time that the spies were um, getting the information to bring back is what the, the scripture says. So here it it's saying the same thing. It's not time to go up to the promised land yet. Um, they're being led astray because the brothers are telling them we were not able to overcome the land. Um, but you are recognizing the father created you and you're so again yes it's the fight between Caleb and the brothers very clear um so 31 representing the 2031 numbers 1331 you have received instruction that the holy father is giving you power authority and solemnity to receive the light uh turn to yeshua hamashiach and receive the visibility to see and be seen for what and who you really are when jesus christ is revealed you will receive praise honor and glory after a trial of faith which involves you being decapitated oh. this will be depicted in some motion pictures or an affirmative movement underhanded and sly movement with hidden motives and purposes okay just very clear i want you guys to understand let's let's look this up together this number is 607 Okay, and the number is, what's the number? 607. I've talked about this before. It says in the Bibles, number one, two, that we are to calculate the um, number of the names. And it says also in Revelations, I forget the verse, maybe 13th, to calculate um, when they're talking about the 666. And we, you know, those who have wisdom, let them calculate the number of the the name for it is a man um so we are to calculate letters because it is hebrew and greek are alphanumeric languages so the number is the same as a letter okay they're 
uh, you can't separate them. It's the same, okay? So here, this is the Bible. These are the original version of the Bible. And if you put in the number here, it'll give you the definition. Oh yeah, 607. So when you put in 607, it says behead, beheaded, to behead, to decapitate, behead, okay? So just again, to, to show you guys, I did not just add that for my entertainment purposes, nor am I doing this for my entertainment purposes. It says in the letter line, when you decode it, copy, paste, and put it together, so let's come let's let's um use the bible verse for context to understand deeper understanding of the bible and deeper understanding of what this is trying to tell us okay so you receive instruction from the father he's given you power so we've talked about that is caleb in the story okay um he at this point is standing up and being bold and allowing him he's going against just think about it he one man is going against when that one man is representing those who will be faithful in the last days, those people will be bold enough to stand up to the others and say, no, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Okay. Under the threat of death, they will stay faithful to uh, the will of God. Okay. You will allow yourself to be seen for who and what you really are. And when we um, look, this is visibility. And when we looked up the Roger definition of, 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 of visibility, the, vi the Bible verse was talking about when the angel came to Mary and told her that she would have Jesus and that he would be uh, given the throne of David, right? So this is, you are standing up as a Christian and saying, this is, um, it's God's way or the highway, pretty much. So when Jesus Christ is revealed, you will be given a praise, glory, and honor, but you have to go through a trial of faith, okay? So this trial of faith, um, in, in the Bible verse, but we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. So the thing is that, yes, the people might be stronger than you, and yes, it might be a situation that you don't feel like you can overcome, but yes, you still have to do it. You still have to go up against Jezebel. You still have to go up against that system. You have to make this happen, okay? And that is your trial of faith, which might result in decapitation. But nonetheless, when Jesus comes back, you will receive your praise and your glory and your honor if you succeed in this trial of faith. Now here, I want to say really quickly with this World Trade Oculus situation, I'm really starting to believe just because of the way that Everything is falling um, in real life and, and the letter lines and the, everything that God is showing me. I'm really believing right now. I really believe that symbolically when they're talking about that um, Nephilim and the giants in the, in the book of uh, uh, numbers here, that it is representing the Oculus technology. Now, I don't know how that's going to work out in real life. Like, are aliens going to come down and be giants or you know, a locust going to come up from the inside of the earth and be giants? Or is it going to be um, the demons that are inside the uh, the virtual reality? Or is it going to be like de demonic possession because uh, CERN has opened up, you know, uh, portals and people are going to be possessed by these uh, uh, demons or, or a little bit of everything or something completely different? I don't really know how it would manifest in our reality, but... I do know that it is connected with the Oculus technology. That is just becoming clearer and clearer. And I will show you, um, I don't know if I'll do it at the end of this video, maybe, uh, maybe the next video. I had another confirmation about that. So um, I just wanted to say this is not an accident. There is no accident that this Oculus uh, keeps popping up at the same time. So when we're, they're talking about beating back Jezebel uh, right here, that is, again, it has to do with this technology somehow. I don't know. And, of course, the New World Order and all of that as well. Um, so here, um, this is when... 
you know, this is all prophesized already. So it's written here, symbolized, and it falls on 2031. Now, this will be depicted in motion pictures. Let me explain that. Motion pictures, I don't have a way to define that. For me, it's just a, a motion pictures is the, the dictionary definition is motion pictures. I don't have a spiritual definition for that because there's no page 607 or 706 in the treaties that I use to um, the, the book cipher that God has revealed to me. There's no other definition for mo motion pictures. So what I did was look up... Um, the Greek number for motion pictures. And that definition in um, Greek is furtive motion. And furtive motion is something that is, um, as you can see here on the screen, right? So I'm, I'm using that to define motion pictures. Um, so in real life, it could be an actual motion picture, or it could be um, something that is underhanded or sly movement or hitting motives, and both can work. If you think about motion pictures, you think about fiction. It's fictional depiction of reality. So it, it could work, you know, symbolically. So either way, this will be depicted in motion pictures or a furtive moment. And in the Bible verse, of course, that is when the brothers were saying, um, we can't go against the people because they're stronger than us. So that was the underhanded, um, untrue depiction. Okay, so it matches. Here, 32, a messenger from God conveys news to you that you are mighty and others are being blessed through the faith of secret information revealed by Jesus and given to the ministers of the saints to reveal the ministry who are the children of the promise, the seed that are advisors. In some way, trickery and artifice is involved when it is re recommended not to become, not to act, but to become still. Hey Amen. Don't tell me that that is an exact match of the situation in the Bible verse. And that's what I'm trying to explain to you guys in my life. When I do the, the, the formula that the Holy Spirit has given me and it, and it falls down and I have year by year of what is going on with my life, it, it works the same way. It is exactly telling me what I've gone through that year. It's giving me the judgment about it. It's giving me, um, you know, my, um, my bloodline. It's, it gives ev all the information is in your name and it reads out just like what I'm showing you right here with the Bible verse. Can you don't tell me that that is not saying the exact same thing as the as the the story here in in Numbers 13. And no, it doesn't you can't I can't just do this with any random Bible verse. Yes, God did show me. He gave me this verse to share with you to use as a, a symbolic uh a representation to show you how it works actually um, I don't know because I'm working by hand I don't have a computer I, I'm not able to you know so I don't know if it works in every Bible verse that has the the letter 32 I don't know but God gave me this one and it works in this one right um, a messenger from God conveys news to you I already read that so it's very very simple a messenger from God is Caleb it's proven by his name. Look at his name. Uh, others are being blessed through the secret information. We already talked about that. The, um, they went out into the land, the spies, and they brought back the information. And we said that that represents us in the last days, okay? The ministry who are the children of promise, da da da, da. So that are the, that's the 12 tribes and the representative of each tribe. And the trickery or some way, and because is at the end of the story when they said, don't go up to the land. And that is trickery when it says not to act but to, but to become still. So I can infer that in 3032, there's going to be a group of, of the saints or a group of... Uh, um, believers, I don't know, a, a, a part of uh, spiritual Israel who will be saying to to not do anything and that is the wrong way to go. We should, you fight. I don't know how that fight is. I don't know when it says beat back Jezebel. I don't know how that looks, but we should be beating back Jezebel and in, in that, at that time. Okay, so you save, if you try to save your life, you'll lose it. You are told, come on, come now. The Father will help us because you are children of the living Father, doing his will, speaking of truth. You have been commanded to patiently endure evil because God has called you to another secret that the Savior revealed and to let 
that feeling you have clawing inside of you to come out. Whoever has ears should hear. Let there's a light within a person of light and it shines on the whole world. If it does not shine, it is dark. So, so um, guys, you can see this with your own eyes. I've shown you everything. You have to decide for yourself, but it seems to me that this could be a rapture situation. I, I really don't know. Come on, come now. The Father is calling us. But as far as what is written here, it is saying that um, the children who are doing uh, the will of God and speaking the truth will be able to go into the, the promise. You have been commanded to patiently endure evil because God has called you to another secret that the Savior has revealed and to let that feeling come out. In general, it, what it seems to me is that uh, by this time, now we have to be careful because I've really, I've had it proven recently because I wasn't sure. Before I thought that it was, the, I know we have to go by the Hebrew calendar, um, but I was under the impression that the Hebrew New Year was November, October because of um, Rosh Hashanah, but I've just had it proven to me. God has shown me and proven this to me recently um, through uh, Rebecca uh, of someone who watches my YouTube channel and we've been corresponding and, and God bless her. God has used her to show me that, um, it's April. April is the new year. I don't know if it's April 1st. It's either April 1st or around about April 1st is the new year for the Hebrew calendar. So that means that every year, the new year starts in April. So here, when it's saying 2033, that would be April, 2033. Um, to April 2034 is what I'm saying. So if indeed this is talking about a rapture situation, um, or I don't know, I don't know, whatever that means in real life, how that's going to work out, um, it would be in that time. It would be before, because right here it says it's not time yet. So it would be between 2030 and 2033, which is funny because, well, 20, I guess 2030, like eight, like 2031, I guess, 2031 and 2033. And it's funny because when I'm doing names, um, a lot of people's names, I haven't done a lot of names yet. I'm, I'm still, I have to do it by hand. So it's going very slowly, but the ones I have done, a lot of them end in this time period. I haven't seen a lot that go past 2033. They all end um, between 2030, uh, 2029 and 2032, 2033 maximum. I, because I don't have the exact um, year because I just found out that it was April. So I would have to go back and recalculate, you know, everything, but I'm just saying around that timeline, there are some people's names who go into 2040 and go further on. Right. But, um, most of the, the names stop around there, including mine. My numbers don't go past 2032. So that would be April 2033, right, uh, and on the Hebrew calendar. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what it's telling us. I don't know what it means yet, but I know it means something. Uh, what does um, 33? Seems to be that this 2033 somehow, however it's going to play out, is a separation between the those who have whoever has the there is a light within a person of light and it shines on the whole world if it does not shine it's dark so in this year in this in the story as well it's very very black or white and 2033 you have light in you and you are shining to the world regardless of threat of death or anything. There's nothing that's going to stop you. You are shining. You are beating back Jezebel. You have done your minister uh, ministry, your duties. You are uh, working and helping in the harvest. And in that case, you are light. 
And if not, you are dark. There is no gray. It is bl it's black and white. Okay. Those who are shining and have the light will be able to go to the father at that time. I don't know symbolically or how that's going to work out in real life, but that's what it's saying. And the other ones, I it seems if I just go to 2033 here, this is uh, Numbers 14, 2033, and your children shall wander in the wilderness for 40 more years to bear your whoredoms until the carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Perhaps, because that would be 33, so... Uh, perhaps the others would have to stay and wander again before they can enter the promised land. Um, I don't know. Here we also have appearance. Um, so as I said, these words, they can be literal and they could be um, all the other ways they could be. But, I mean, could it be the appearance of of Jesus telling us to come, come now. Is this the rapture, y'all? Is it possible that this is the rapture and the falling away is up here? I forget which number is the falling away. Um, and, uh, oh my goodness. And then the appearance of, you know, the, the antichrist that we have to fight. And I mean, it just seems like, I'm gonna stop here with this video because I don't have, I don't have answers. I'm just showing you that it's true. I'm showing you that it's real and I'm showing you how it works using the Bible verse as context, okay? And this is how it works with your life. You will, when I do your name with the formula, it will fall out just like this and it'll, it'll be written year by year. So you'll be able to see each year of your life. And, um, and then what is written here will talk about what was going on with you in each year of your life. And it is absolutely true. It is truer than you will, like you, when you read it, you'll go, oh my goodness, yes, that is exactly what happened to me because it'll be talking about what's in your heart. It'll be talking about stuff that nobody else would even know that sometimes you wouldn't even know because you would have to really think about how you felt or, you know, the substance of your heart your deepest core, that is what it tells you in your name. And you know it's true because you lived it, okay? So um, then you're able to apply this to everything around you to see really what the truth is about everything. And, and that's why I think that's, I know that's why God gave us this um, technology right now because there's so much deception and there's going to be so much deception that there's only out of 12 tribes there's only uh one out of 12 that are are going to uh do the right thing and everyone else is going to be deceived and fall away so wow for uh, giving i guess we can use my new stream as giving more detail to what we're seeing here in in on this one and um, I don't know, I, I'm really, I'm kind of shocked and it's strange because I've already done this video, I've done it twice. I've already recorded like a two hour version of this video and I had to throw it away in the garbage because God told me, no, that's not right. And I had to start again. Um, so even though I've been working on this for a week and I've known this information, this is the first time it's really hitting me and that's how I know it's right. <laughs> So God bless you. I hope you have a good day. Um, I forgot to say that, you know, the Illuminati stuff are Satan's prophecies. And this is bringing light and clarity to God's, Jesus's, Yeshua HaMashiach, my Holy Lord and Savior, his prophecies and what he's telling us, his children, the body of Christ, what we are to be doing in the last days, uh, year by year. And this is it, y'all. This is what we are to be doing. I am going to do a timeline. I'm going to write, I don't know, I, it's going to take me a minute because I have to figure out the software. But when I figure it out, I'm going to write a timeline of John 21 and Numbers 13, and I'm going to put it down um, so that you can go on my website, wakefulnesstheology.com and read for yourself the timeline that, um, are in these, these two verses. Okay. But please have patience with me. There's, there's more work than I have time to do it. Um, but I'm very thankful that I did get this done today. Uh, and I'll be working on the last part and hopefully you should have that this weekend or early next week. God bless you. Have a good day. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Mwah.